Yo, what's up, swag? And you already know what time it is, man. Hey, 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 the best content on YouTube, man. The best reaction channel on YouTube, man. It's your boy, Keon Lara, aka KL Swag. <sighs> Back here with a video, you guys. Look, man, I just see you guys request. Damn, my hair. Fuck all that. Forget it. Hey, I just see you guys requested for me to react to the craziest 77 seconds in MB. Not NBA, NFL history, you guys. Um, hey, like I told you guys, all you guys got to do is, you know, go in the comments and go crazy, man. Let me know what you guys want me to react to. And, yeah, I know my hair needs to be, be you know, fixed up. But, um, yeah, man, um, this YouTuber name is Official Jaguar Gator 9. Uh, shout out to him. And let's just get into the reaction. September 30th, 1990. Which stadium Damn, 1990? Stadium between the Buffalo Bills and the Denver Broncos. Both of these teams made it to the postseason the year before, with the Broncos representing the AFC at Super Bowl 24. Both of these teams are off to pretty good starts this season, as they're both sitting at two and one through three games. Damn. And it's the much anticipated matchup between two of the best quarterbacks in the game, with John Elway and Jim Kelly going at it. Damn. Both of these quarterbacks would wind up in the Hall of Fame when all is said and done. Okay. But on this day in 1990, through three quarters, it was all Denver. Denver led it 21 to 9 through three quarters, and they had the ball to start off the fourth. Okay. They were doing everything that they needed to, driving it down the field, taking time off the clock, and setting themselves up to put this game out of reach. Now, with about 11 minutes left in the game, the Broncos had the ball inside Buffalo's 10 yard line. Yes, sir. It's a third and three situation. John Elway takes the snap, and it's a design quarterback draw. Oh. And early on, it looks like there's a hole at the middle for Elway to get the first down and drain some more clock. Ooh. But then, number 96 on Buffalo sheds his blocker and is able to force Elway to the outside. That's Leon Seals, who got drafted by the Bills in the fourth round in 1987 and is now in his fourth season in the league. Seals would start every game for the Bills that season on the defensive line, and though this play doesn't show up in the stat sheet, it's arguably one of the biggest plays of his NFL career. If Seals doesn't shed his block, that's an easy first down for Elway. But Seals is able to force Elway to the outside, slowing him down, where the Bills then made the tackle and stopped him short of the sticks to force a fourth down. What's about to transpire because of this play is nothing short of remarkable. Because what's about to happen now is the craziest 77 seconds in NFL history. Okay. Now, before I talk about these 77 seconds, we need some perspective going into this on just how absurd the situation is. Uh huh. The first season with the two point conversion in the NFL was 1994. So at the time of this game in 1990, the two point conversion did not exist. Damn! If Denver successfully made this chip shot field goal from 24 yards out, it's a 15 point lead. Whoa! Under the rules of 1990, it's a three possession game. And that's absolutely huge. At that point, the Broncos, who had been around for over 30 years, had never blown a three-possession lead in the fourth quarter in franchise history. I looked at every game in NFL and AFL history. For this, a three-possession game is defined as any NFL game where one team is up by 15 or more points, or any AFL game where one team is up by 17 or more points, since the AFL had the two-point conversion throughout its 10-year history in the 1960s. Mm. The NFL had been around for 70 years at this point. Damn. And I could only find 21 instances of a team having a three-possession lead in the fourth quarter and then proceeding to blow it. Here's a look at every single one of them, all 21, including a game between the Buccaneers and the Cardinals in 1987 where the Buccaneers blew a 28-3 lead. Oh, my I God. Guess it's a requirement to be a part of today's NFC South. So if Denver made this field goal to extend their lead to 15 points against Buffalo it would be a near insurmountable deficit for Buffalo to come back from. And keep in mind that the stat I just mentioned doesn't factor in the time remaining when the lead was blown. Damn. It wasn't just a fourth quarter lead by three possessions. This would have been a fourth quarter lead with 10 minutes left in the game. Buffalo would have had to play a flawless game at that point and then some to come back. They don't got no ass. And it's safe to assume that this field goal from 24 yards out was a guarantee. 
Broncos kicker David Treadwell was one of the best kickers in football at the time. Was he? Heading into this attempt, he had made 28 out of 30 field goals inside of 40 yards. The previous year, in 1989, Treadwell was named a Pro Bowler after hitting over 81% of his kicks, <laughs> which was the fourth best percentage in the league. Damn. Pro Football Weekly and UPI named him a first-team All-Pro as well. Hey! And in week one during the 1990 season, he had a 24-yard field goal attempt against the Raiders. While he couldn't find a pointy ass kick, nose, man. he made it. Ah, damn, he didn't so poke me with that stood, shit. The Broncos damn, that had a 99.5% right. chance. Damn, I should have cut that out. I, I mean, he gonna poke, like, he gonna, like, poke, like, poke me with it. Damn, damn. That's winning this game. Make the field goal, and it goes up to a 99.9% .9 chance. Damn. So the scene has been set. We've got a lead that's almost insurmountable, a field goal attempt by a kicker who is practically automatic and is one of the best in the league. Sounds like and it. We've got a situation where, due to the score of the game and the time left on the clock, a win is all but guaranteed. Hmm. Keep all of that in mind when I show you what's about to happen over these next 77 seconds. Yes, show me. That's crazy. I think my favorite part about this play is number eight on the Broncos. That's Gary Kubiak, the backup quarterback and the holder on this play. <laughs> At least he tried to make the tackle. <laughs> that's one of the worst tackle attempts I've ever seen. He was nowhere near Bennett on the play. So now there's still about <laughs> 10 minutes shit. left. And Denver still has... He wasn't game, getting shit. Even if Buffalo has some life in them now. Denver's win probability with that one play dropped from 99.5% to 82.3%. But they're still in a pretty good spot. First down run. God damn. Down, stuffed at the line. Second down, and madness ensues. Making it tough. Buffalo's got the lead. A blocked field goal and a pick six later, and Buffalo has now taken the lead for the first time today. That was nice. That's Leon Seals who tipped the pass, and that Leonard nice. Smith who got the pick. For Smith, this was the second pick six of his career. Mm. as he had won back in 1984 as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. Nine and a half minutes left, uh, damn, he got popped. and Denver's win probability in the span of a minute has dropped from 99.5% to 36.5%. I mean, he's not faster than me, but he's A botched moving. kickoff and a penalty later, and Denver's got the ball at their own five-yard line. But before we continue with the madness, want to see one of the worst rules in the history of the NFL in action? Because in 1990... In what many people call the no fun league, not even the fans were allowed to have fun. Damn, that's fucked up. Wow. Wow. Because they'll stop the 45 second clock and, and Denver can stand there forever. That's crazy. The defense can't encourage the crowd. Now, Shane Conlon is telling them to quiet down. That's going to help a bunch, isn't it? That's yeah. crazy as hell. They get the message. Yes. I've been requested to assist in quieting the crowd. Whoa! Your cooperation. Wow! Bob McElwee asked the crowd to quiet Back in the day, they had the crowd being quiet? Oh, shit! Bro, they had the... They had, they had the bro, they had the crowd being quiet? That is crazy. Yeah. They were about but that's to wild. On the very next play. The crowd had to be quiet. Probably to Humphrey. He's the long setback in the ace backfield. That's ace fucked up. Buffalo. Now we got it. The Buffalo has it. Telling the crowd to be quiet and they spent their money. This is stupid. Yeah, go crazy. Go crazy. Fumble recovered by Buffalo. And then, to top it all off, with Buffalo on the two-yard line, Kenneth Davis punched. In reality, Denver's win probability at this point was probably along the lines of 4 or 5%. In a matter of 77 seconds, the Bills went from out of it to completely in control. 77 seconds, that's crazy. By a final score of 29 to 28. After the game, Buffalo defensive end Leon Seals said that he's never seen anything like that before. Denver yeah. offensive guard Doug Whittle said he was in shock. That's wild. And John Elway said that the team felt pretty good about the situation heading into the field goal. And then the roof caved in. 
aftermath. Turns out, this game would kickstart Buffalo's incredible 1990 campaign, and it would send Denver into a tailspin. The Broncos entered this game against the Bills with a record of 2-1. and one. Damn. Over the next 10 games, they would go 1-9. and nine. Meanwhile, when they advanced to Super Bowl 25. Oh, that's crazy. The following season, the Bills and the Broncos would meet up in the AFC Championship to determine who would go on to Minnesota for Super Bowl 26. Yeah. And in the lead-up to that game, Denver head coach Dan Reeves said that the team still hadn't forgotten what happened on that fateful day in 1990. <laughs> It's the most remarkable 77-second stretch in NFL history. We had to tell the crowd to be quiet in the middle of all of that. What? The best play for Denver in that five-play stretch was a run that went for zero yards. When that's the case, then that says everything you need to know about what Buffalo just did. Oh, my gosh, bro. That is crazy. Anyways, man, make sure you comment, subscribe. I love you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next